Hello and welcome to a brief demonstration of some of the capabilities of the upcoming Mars release of Eclipse pertaining to OCL, especially in the context of UML modeling with Papyrus. So having a look at a comically simple example of a model of a banking system in which we have persons with identification and address, accounts with identifying numbers, uh, a kind, a balance, other attributes and operations. A person can have any number of accounts. An account is held by exactly one person. And an account can go through a very simple life cycle. It can be open. An open account be can become delinquent or suspended. An account can be closed. So what we'd like to do is define some constraints using OCL to further specify this simple model. So let's have a look at what we can do with a complete OCL document. Referencing the user model, UML model that we're defining constraints for, in the context of a person we can define an invariant constraint stating that a person may have at most one account that is overdraft. Very simple. Uh, specifying the body expression for a query operation. So OCL lets us not only define precondition and postcondition constraints for any kind of operation, but for an operation that specifically is a side effect free query as declared in the model we can specify what the value of the operation is. In this case, we compute a set of accounts by selecting from the person's accounts those that are of the kind parameter that are overdraft. The result is a set because the account property of the person is unique and unordered, so OCL sees that uh, the collection value as a set, and selecting from a set yields another set. In the case of the account, we have a very simple constraint referencing with this syntax an enumeration literal defined in the model. Now an interesting thing that we can do with OCL, we can specify constraints that make reference to the state of an object as modeled in its state machine. So for example, I can define an invariant constraint on the delinquent state of an account that if the account is in the delinquent state, then that implies that it must be overdraft. So the editor gives us nice context sensitive completion suggestions based on the names of things in the model and the kind of expression that we're completing. In the context of a derived property, such as the isOverdraft property, which you can tell is derived by the leading slash, that's a derived property here, we can specify the derivation expression of that property, as an overdraft account is simply one that has a negative balance. So that is constraining a model using OCL constraints defined in a complete OCL document. So presumably some kind of uh, code, uh, code generation transformation out of this might combine the constraints with the model definition to produce some kind of useful code. We can also, in the UML model itself, embed OCL constraints in various places 
to accomplish the same ends. So for example, we can define the same at most delinquent constraint, at most one delinquent. Let's just copy that. In the context of the person as an owned rule of the person class and with its own name, constraints being named elements in the UML model, we don't need any of this context declaration syntax because by its placement in the model this is a named invariant constraint. So all that we need to do is go here and give it a specification. Oops. So let's create an opaque expression with OCL language that the tooling understands. Paste that in and we're good to go. So I can validate the model to check that the constraint is well formed and it seems to be. There's no problems reported. Likewise for operation body conditions we can specify a body condition in the model and that is recognized as a body condition by being owned in the body condition property of the operation. So once again, whoops, I don't want a natural language constraint. Good. So let's try to freehand this one. So we're computing from self.account. We're selecting the accounts that have the kind that is the input parameter that are overdraft. All right. Now this is not so easy to visualize on a diagram because we cannot link the, uh, the visually link the constraint to its operation context because the operation is just an item in a list compartment. But we can drag it onto the diagram just to see it there and validate the model. And oops, there's a problem with it. What is that problem? The person delinquent's constraint is invalid. Whoop. Uh, unresolved property account is over dat. Well, yeah, that was just a simple typo. So let's fix that. Is overdraft. Good. All right, and oh, look at that. Revalidated for us already, and the problem goes away. Good. Thank you, Papyrus. Now, besides invariant constraints on classes and uh, derivation constraints for properties and such, there's a particular placement of, OC of OCL constraints in a UML model that is recognized by the OCL specification, and that is the guard on a transition. So in a transition, we can have a guard that in this case specifies that when the account is overdraft, the transition from the open state to the delinquent state fires. So that is this guard here. And if we have a look at the details, that has an opaque expression in the OCL language triggered or guarded by self.isOverdraft. So that is recognized by OCL as a guard by being 
a constraint in the guard property of a transition. And in that case, the OCL specification tells us, in particular, that the self context of that constraint expression is the class, the behavior classifier that owns that state machine. The curious thing about that is that there is no concrete syntax specified by OCL for the same kind of placement of a constraint. So there is no way to declare in text a guard condition of a state machine transition. So just a little something overlooked, I suppose, by the OCL specification. One of the ways in which OCL and UML specifications still are not in perfect alignment. So there you have a look at defining constraints for UML models using OCL in accompanying OCL, com uh, complete OCL documents or embedded in the UML model. Thank you.